the, the thing that I want to just consistently do is just is is stay right here. You know what I mean? In this in this game, because so many times, right? Jim Harbaugh's been here what seven, eight years, you know, and and he's never been able to to get over the Ohio State hump. And the thing that we've talked about, and I called you earlier today, of uh, the it this wasn't, you know, the the here's here's the thing that I love was when Jim Harbaugh made you know got over the Ohio State hump. It wasn't a year where Ohio State were just slouches. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It wasn't a year where oh, I, I just caught Ohio State when they had a five and five season. Like right. they were two and seven. Like I didn't. I didn't. You didn't catch them then. Like you caught them when you could argue they were at their peak. You know what I mean? Like I. I they just got through embarrassing Michigan State, yeah. embarrassing them to the point where people were on Twitter talking about uh, Michigan State shouldn't sign Mel Tucker to that extension. And right. now we we. We're reasonable people, so we know that's ridiculous. But nonetheless, like that's when you caught Ohio State is they were coming off of that game. It wasn't 2018 where they just struggled off of a Maryland win, where you know basically they 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 shouldn't really shouldn't have won that game. I, I, I'll 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 believe that till the day I die. Um, it, you know, it, it it wasn't then. It was just when it was when they came off an historic win. Just absolutely embarrassing teams. They jumped Alabama in the CFP, and and that's when you got them. Yeah. Like that's the thing that I appreciate so much was not so much of, of it. Yes, you you had to get them essentially, but none. Of, but when you got them was just golden. Like it wasn't. You know what I mean? Because it, it, and and stay with me for a little bit. But you know, Dre, it, it, think about it. If let's say um, you know. Ohio State, Oregon happens the way it did, right? And let's say that Ohio State's first conference game, and, and I get it, this would never happen, but let's say it's Ohio State, Michigan, that first conference game, right? So they just come off the Oregon loss, and you beat them then, right? That would be different than than what just happened today. Like, and that and that's the thing that I want to, you know, because a lot of times with just, just sports in general, like, right, the goalpost gets moved a lot because it's just like, yo, when you're a big time football man, like, all right, cool, you did it this week. What's what's up next week? Like, even before we get to that point, and I and I think we'll hammer that home on Wednesday. But just the timing of when you were able to get over that hump and beat Ohio State, it, it just cannot, it can't be overstated, man. This is an incredible win. This is an incredible win. That's and I'm actually shocked career. you don't have a bigger smile on your face, to be that, quite frank. That's one of Harbaugh's career. And you know what, man? All the grief that guy gets. And that guy, hey, a lot of it's warranted. You know, he deserves it. He deserves it. Um, you know, this team deserves it. And like I said, when so a team is going through adversity and they're getting stones thrown at them, and some of it's warranted, you know, when I throw some of those stones. But when they're able to just stay the course, stay the course, and and finally break through that wall, that proverbial wall that just always seems to just stop them in their tracks. And um, it, it's it's incredible, incredible to see. And um, we don't what impact this has on the future in terms of recruiting or uh, the results of this game going forward. That remains to be seen. Nor does it matter. Um, this this is this is you know, Michigan's all about history. Well, those kids made their mark. I'm sorry, Dre. Can I can I for one second just do a quick glimpse of what is happening here Go with ahead. my people? Help yourself. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm being very selfish, but I just need this to happen. Show the I love. I need this to happen to see what is going on behind me. Uh, just the people that are just excited about Michigan football. They should. Like this is this is it. That it. That's it. That is. That's what it's about. That's why you know what I mean. Like the the large fan base and like just everything. Like that's that's what it's all about. So yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry to to no, take your time, but no. go ahead. It's your work. No, 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 no. It, it's it, it's about changing narratives, right? You know, and and you know, for the last you know 15, 16, whatever it was, meetings, we've been Ohio State's doormat. We really have. You know, I thought of an anomaly year in 2011. And um, like you said, man, the context also of what's on the line 
right? And and how team both teams were playing coming to this game. You know, this wasn't Ohio State team that season was over. You know, due to some early losses, right? Nothing really, not really playing for anything. No, they were playing for everything. Number two in the country, national title, not just Big Ten title. You know, favorites, national title favorites. You know, like people thought they have a legit chance because of their offensive weapons. Um, not defensively, but their offensive weapons to win the whole thing, uh, like they did in 14. And um, no, we, we put that to a screeching halt and we sent them packing, right? For years, they sent us packing. We sent them home packing, right? And um, it, it, it's, man, like I said, like we literally took their soul with the way we ran that football. I mean, the the visual, and we knew Ohio State wouldn't just go away. You know, the visual, you know, Ohio State works, works it down the field. Mike McDonough and the defense did it perfectly. We weren't going to keep them out the end zone for the most part, right? But, um, you know, uh, you know, we made them take a lot of time off the clock, right? They go, we, we're still up 20 to 28. We get the ball back. And, um, you know, at this point, I think it's four. I remember looking at the clock. It was four minutes and 45 seconds. And I'm pretty sure what was said on that sideline played out. It, it obviously played out exactly on the field. They probably, Harbaugh and, and, and Gaddis and the offensive line coach and Mike Hart, the running backs coach, probably said, this is when we end it right now. This is where we end it right now. In that drive, for four minutes and 40, 45 seconds, to drive it down their throat when they got to get a stop. And they're selling out. And they just couldn't stop Hassan Haskins in that running game. Uh, and that offensive line, it, it was masterful. Masterful. Uh, uh, to watch, and it was the de- it was debilitating. Ohio-, Ohio State just had nothing. Finally, they broke. You know, Hassan breaks out and you know gets that run down to the five yard line. They just had nothing else. They had nothing left. They had nothing left. They were physically overwhelmed in this game. They just were, and they weren't. And, and, and they, if they were not so talented on the outside with three NFL receivers in Olave, uh, Sif and Jibba, and Wilson. They might have lost by more today. That's how physically dominant the Wolverines were over the Buckeyes. That's that's the point I'm making. Um, and so, no, man, it, it was it was fantastic. You know, who cares? The future has to hold. But today, this will be a game that I think a lot of us will remember as Michigan fans for, for forever. It really is. Yeah, so, they, uh, they well. Well. you know, and so once again, K make the throw made the throws he had to make, man. Um, the throw to, I mean, hell, I mean, Andre Anthony dropped one. I mean, it, I, it's kind of a drop. He had to leak, take off. It was the offsides call, and uh, K took a shot, overthrew it a tad, and Andrew Anthony had to leave his feet. Um, I'll put that 50 50 because, you know, because Anthony had to leave his feet, you, so you got to give him an A for effort, but he had the ball right in his hands, right? You know, so I mean, it, it's, uh, like I said, K was splendid today, man. You know, and, and I thought that, like I said, the biggest thing for him wasn't just the throws. It was not being rattled by throwing a pick at that point. Because at that point in the game, 100% of their momentum was on Michigan side. You go up seven zip, beautiful play calling. And then you text me, hey, man, cop, rinse, 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 wash, repeat on that last drive, right? The very first drive the guy has had. And, um, you know, they were dominating their first drive to get the ball back. You know, they get Ohio State to get, give them the ball in really good territory. And, you know, they're driving again and, you know, have a chance to go up 14-0 early in the first quarter and we throw a pick. And that could have been a moment that, like, totally changed the game. And K could have went to a shell, right, or lost his confidence. He didn't. Gaddis and lose his confidence in him. Of course, the running game still was the number one driving force, but we didn't become one-dimensional. We still passed the ball. Uh, especially when we needed to. And at times that was unexpected. And um, it, it was just, like I said, man, I, I, it, it was incredible, incredible to, to watch. So I told Mark on Wednesday that if Michigan won this game today, that the Saturday post game would be renamed. It would not be the Maze and Blue Review. It would just be the Dre Show. And that's <laughs> that's truly how I feel. Yeah. Um and I, I want to let you keep rolling. So, but one thing I will do is uh, acknowledge we got a super chat from Zaqua. Um, thank you so much, appreciate it. But it just it just simply says let's go blue. Um, and then also too, I will highlight uh, Span Marchiola. Thank you once again, just a super sticker. But um, Dre, one one thing I'll do and. Um, 
I've, to be quite frank with everybody, have had quite a bit of libations. So I'm going to jump off camera for a minute and relieve myself. But the one question I will have to you is, Dre, here, here's the here's the statement I will I will have to you, and I, I'd like to hear your response. Is Dre, Michigan has a very clear path to the to the college football playoff. Well, talk dirty to me. What is your response to that? I think it's a hundred. I think it's a hundred percent truth. You know, you get past the monolith of Ohio State, you know, and then you get to a Big Ten title game versus the Big Ten West. And we now know it will come down to Minnesota or Wisconsin. Uh, Michigan has beat Wisconsin, granted, early in the year. So, by all means, hey, Wisconsin's played a lot better football. You can never sleep on them. Same thing in Minnesota. We've seen what Minnesota did with Ohio State. They gave them a run for their money first game of the year. Um, so, both teams, by no means, are runovers. You got to have respect for them. But, yes, we have a very clear shot at the college football playoff. Michigan is a better football team than both Minnesota and Wisconsin. Bar none. Bar none. Don't care what the game is played, September, uh, late October, late November, it doesn't matter. December, when th this game will be played for the Big Ten title, uh, Michigan's a better team. Uh, and, you know, they just – that's the last thing in front of them. Uh, it, it, and, and it's a great opportunity. It's a neutral field. Um so you don't have to worry about any kind of crazy fan interactions or stuff like that. Um, it, it, it's a, it's a it's wide open for them because they are the front runner. They are the better team, no matter who they play this next game to get to the CFP. And um, yeah, man, I, I mean, I think they can get to the national title game. 